Yeah, that that does make it clearer, right? Like every once in a while, I would picture Plax still a Thrykreen, and you know he's not. I love those goggles, though. That is. No, awesome. he's a he's a cutie. I didn't realize that. We have to <laughs> be better look at him. Hey, uh, Bohika, good to see ya. We're just gonna pop on right now. We're getting set up. We're back from GaryCon, so that's good. Good to be back with everybody. We were off for, what, two weeks ago was the last time that we played, and we left off on a bit of a cliffhanger with the group uh, having just made it to the Maelstrom, um, about a mile offshore from uh, Glorium, where they spend a little bit of time. We'll do a little recap of uh, where we are coming into the story here in just a second. But um, before we begin, thank you for joining us. Yes, Glor uh, Bohika, good to see you. Uh, the trip was good. Um, what was it, four or five days down in Lake Geneva? Spent a lot of time uh, with your cousin, and he, he was there for much longer. Uh, but I think he had a pretty good time. Um, we played a lot of games. We played, what, a lot of 5e. Uh, we were running a lot of games for Goodman Games throughout the week. Um, and then we snuck away. We had a chance to play some... Uh, what is the name of it? We deal in lead. We, did, we played a kind of very strange uh, Western-themed adventure using uh, Keep on the Borderlands as our our playground, so... Fort on the Forderlands. Fort That's on what. the Frontierlands. <laughs> yeah, Fort on the Forderlands. Uh, <laughs> just rolls right off the tongue. Oh, yeah, there's a little fiasco in there as well. So, uh, yeah, it was a great, great fun. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go out to Gary Khan, I'd highly recommend it, or really any gaming convention. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Get to try out a lot of new games, get to lot of, meet a lot of new people. Um and Gary Khan was cool because we got to meet a lot of uh, people that we knew from streaming or people that we've uh, listened to. I got to meet uh, the 3D6 down the line guys, which they were they were my inspiration for doing the Dolmenwood podcast. So it was kind of cool to chat with them and tell them how their uh, games inspired us to do our own thing. So it was a lot of fun. Uh yes, I we will we will. We will keep it. We will zip it on any any stories that he told about you. Don't worry. Your secrets are safe with us. Uh, if this is your first time joining us here on Twenty Sides Every Story, we'd invite you to come join us in our Discord server. Uh, that is where we uh, hang out in between the games and talk about the games we're playing in and recruit for games that we wish to be playing in. I know Casey's got a got a, a call for players out there right now for the. Uh, was it Eye of Eye of Ruin? Eve of Ruin. I always feel like it should be Eye of Ruin because Vecna's on the front, but I think it's called Eve of Ruin, which is a Wait, high is it level... called Eve? I think so. I've I've always read it as I. Yeah, I, I th oh, no. it seems like it should be I, but uh Yeah, Sundance Kid, good to see ya. Not too much. We're just getting started, so you're, you haven't missed anything here yet. So we're just just uh, inviting people to come join us in the Discord, and we've got some some games that need players. Yes, Eve of Ruin. There is an I in the prequel adventure. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, join the Discord. Uh, potentially sign up for that. We have also do a lot of one-shots and things, uh, random things that are happening. So we'd love to have you come join us for a game. Uh, this week, we're trying to get back to our regular schedule. We've got this here tonight happening, and then Friday, we're going to return the Free League back to its proper place and time with Free League Fridays. Uh, Isaac's going to be running some more Forbidden Lands uh, for us. That'll be Friday at 8 p.m. So... Uh, I guess uh, we are down Jenna tonight, so we will be missing Clack. We will probably introduce the reason why Clack is missing uh, in the game pretty, pretty, pretty quick. But why don't we do some character introductions before we get started with, uh, with the actual game. So I uh, don't have a prompt or anything, but just go around, tell us a little bit about your character and what they're all about. And... 
Why don't we start just on the left there with Isaac playing Ziloff? Hello, playing Ziloff. Ziloff is currently a dwarf wild magic barbarian. I say currently because Ziloff has been at one point before this whole adventure. Uh, blue bard slash warlock dragonborn. A human hell rider uh, paladin. Uh, elf monk and an elf monk. So there have been many forms of Ziloff. Uh, Ziloff currently... Uh, when he started uh, this adventure, he was in a bit of despair and misery. And uh, that has turned to uh, an overall positive outlook and uh, hope for the future, whatever that leads. Uh, he is a bit worried of putting these things, what putting these things uh, that we're encountering back together really means for him and his friends. Uh, but he will kind of tackle that obstacle goal when we get to that. Right now we have giant tentacles coming at us. So that's yeah. a lot. Sounds good. Let's move on over next to Robin playing Cerebella. Hi, I'm playing Cerebella Storm. She is an orc wizard who was formerly a human from Nebraska. Uh, runner up at a you know beauty pageant queen kind of thing. So... Her main goal is just to get back to Nebraska, get out of this strange place, stop dealing with these weird situations, and just get back to quote-unquote normal, where she doesn't have green skin and look like a monster. Priorities. All right, let's move next to Dawson, who is playing Baldwin. Hello, I'm going to try and save my voice for a little bit of this because it's not doing too great, so we'll speedrun it. I am Baldwin, currently a slime dude ranger, formerly a leper, formerly a normal dude, formerly an undead, but now currently the slime dude. Boy, there's a lot of stuff going on here that seems pretty wacky, if you ask me. So many mysteries to solve, so much things, but oh my goodness, is that a tentacle rising out of the water? Uh-oh, that's not good. Not good at all. Thank you, Dawson. And let's move next to Lyra playing Baz. Uh, yeah, I'm playing Basil Branson Barkley III. Um, he is originally from an aristocratic family. Um, he was uh, really big into his, uh, his, his hawks back at home. Um, he is currently uh, an Elodin druid. And uh, it's pretty new. And I think he's... He's been having a lot of ups and downs throughout this. Uh, back in in his original uh, life, he was a pretty standard young adult sort of person, but now he's been having a lot of ups and downs, and uh, not real sure where he's going to land at this point. But yep, there are definitely there are definitely monsters in the water. All right, awesome. So last time we left off, the group had come to the gate town of Glorium, which uh, is a connection point to the realm of Isgard. Uh, they they came uh, to this location from uh, the snowy mountain tops and found themselves at this village on the mouth of a bay. Uh, where they noted that all of the boats seemed to be docked, and all, all of the uh, sailors, the captains of those boats, um, were not eager to be heading out into the choppy waters because uh, there were tales of these great war, these uh, sea serpents that uh, were not native to the region that had come down into the bay and were threatening um, many of the boats. They had attacked a number of the boats uh, in the previous weeks, and everyone was kind of playing it safe. Um, characters met with the leader of Glorium, um, a... a almost giant of a woman named uh, Tirza Bonebreaker, um, who seemed to be in the midst of training uh, many of the able-bodied in Glorium uh, for combat. Um, 
characters had uh, talked with her a bit, and she shared uh, that they were preparing for um, any any attacks by uh, giants and such uh, coming up, uh, coming down out of the mountains, and that this was um, fairly typical um, routine for them. Uh, the characters inquired about trying to find passage to the portal to Iskard so that they could attune to uh, attune the Mimir uh, to the portal and found that uh, their their chances of doing so maybe lied with one individual who had a boat, uh, Bacall, an orc, who uh, seemed to have kind of lost his uh, courage or um lost a bit of his spirit he was the captain of a ship shaped like a shaped like a bird and it turns out is actually a sentient creature of sorts um the characters had gone to talk to him and see if he might be willing to give them a ride out to the uh out to the portal disc guard uh he was unwilling at first but um i believe it was baldwin had um through magical means, chatted uh, with the the courier, uh, the the raven boat, a little bit, and learned a little uh, something of uh, Bacall's past. That he um, believes that he is cursed and had actually lost his best friend in a storm some number of years ago, and was thus unwilling to head out into the waters. Uh, the group kind of set out to uh, uh, take him throughout town and have him uh, kind of be celebrated by the townsfolk once again in an uh, effort to kind of raise his spirits and, and get his, uh, his, his courage back that he might uh, take them out. Um, he eventually acquiesced and agreed, but not before um, heading out to talk to an oracle who lived in this little... Um, kind of shrined some distance from Glorium. They went out and talked with her, the sea hag, who um, had suggested to Bacall that the the curse or the shadow that hung over him wasn't actually a storm of the physical world, but one of a loss of confidence in his heart. Um, she also had some things to say to the characters, suggesting that they... Um, well, that they are but um, the latest uh, iteration of themselves. They've lived many lifetimes and were stitched together by a common thread and that they, their fate um, and the fate of many rest on their shoulders, that they have to get this right, whatever that means. Um, and so they banded together. Uh, they got some of uh, Bacall's old crew together and they started rowing this ship, the Courier, out into the sea. Uh, they've traveled about one mile um, and they found themselves in the churning whirlpool of the Maelstrom, at the center of which is the uh, portal. Uh, the this ship is 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 manned by a seasoned crew they were doing their best to kind of row against the tide and kind of slowly uh and and in sort of a measured fashion get close enough to the eye of the storm there that um clack might be able to attune the mimir to it when you started to see this kind of green fin emerge up out of the choppy waters and that fin was attached to a eel-like serpentine um, body you saw three such forms swimming about as we are opening up our session you can see the bacall his hand is kind of jittering a bit he's looking out to the choppy waters he's still with a measured voice kind of giving um, orders to his crew to to try to push against the the, the waves that are, are now crashing down against the hull of the ship and are almost threatening to kind of bury it under their uh, under their weight but they're 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 doing a good job currently in keeping the boat under control he looks to you 
all and says, you got to do something about these serpents. Uh, we, we can handle the waters, but the, the, the serpents themselves, you're going to have to deal with. We can't, if I lose even a single man, we could be, we could be taken down. And so uh, you should be hooked up, ready to roll initiative, and we're going to get this started as I see we've got a raid here. Uh, Homebrew Cafe, thank you for joining us with your your folks. We appreciate that. We'll give you a shout out here real quick. Hope you guys are having a good game here tonight. Appreciate you stopping by. And maybe my maybe it's not working because I had the game pause. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're gonna start things off here with Baldwin beginning. And so um you can't currently see them unless uh, tell me what your passive perception is. Uh I believe it's eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Uh I'm gonna say you can see one of them. He's about ten feet under the water, uh, so his body is not is not above the surface. You just saw him for a second. You know the fin came up and then he dove down again, and so you could see his silhouette in the water. He's about ten feet submerged, on the left side of the ship. Um, there are two others that you know that are swimming about, lurking about, and based on. Um, the choppiness of the water and the way that the boat is rocking, you you believe that at least one of them is also on the opposite side of the ship. For that one starboard side. Boy, I'm not going to do that voice much longer. <laughs> uh, if I were to lean over and take aim and shoot down, uh, how would that be? Would it be easy shot, a little difficult? Um, you believe that that's possible. There'd be no penalty uh, to doing that on the left side. Gonna, gonna, oop, can I move myself? There we go. Get a little closer to the ledge, look down, aim my musket, and fire twice. But this fire is a little more hot. I will use sharpshooter. First one is a 10. That one will miss. I got two of these for a reason. 18. That one will hit. He will take 26 damage for the first hit. I will cast with my bonus action Zephyr Strike and go by. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Excellent work. That'll be it. That'll bring us to Cerebella. All right. And uh, not having seen them right now, but knowing that they're they're probably down there, um, I'm going to hold my action. I want to cast, cast Banishment on the first one that I see. Okay. So I'll put that. What's your passive the... perception? Nine. Nine. Okay. So you mm -hmm. can't see a person uh, right now, but you can ready that for when one emerges. All right. And I want to kind of step back as well. I'll just kind of sit here and wait for one to just come leap in and, you know, have my little spell finger ready. So oh, they also found the bench. <laughs> yep. All right, uh, you're going to have your opportunity pretty much right away. This one okay. right here is going to leap up and is like right on the side of the hull. So it's a DC 15 charisma save. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> oh, wow. Manages to make it. Oh, sure he does. <laughs> and he, as he leaps up, um, he sees the spell casting and is going to, like, he's, like, latched on. Um, it doesn't really have arms, per se, but, like, like the neck has, like, latched on and his head is, like, inside the ship right now. But uh, the opposite side of his body, he's whipping his tail into the ship 
and is going to try to target uh, Cerebella with that. And he'll have to be right there. His attack. Saving throw. Okay. Or is that after it? First, okay. he has to hit. Uh, well, he'll hit. But with a twenty-one. Because I have an armor class of eleven, so. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, DC sixteen strength saving okay. throw. Let's You're so strong. That. You got this. You're so strong. Sure. Yeah. I'm, Wizard I'm strength. Strong. Wizard it's strength. Ten. It's ten. It's. I'm not that strong. Wizard, Wizard. strength. Wizard hey, strength. I'm strength. as strong as he is charismatic. <laughs> Keeps you on so. your feet. Uh, he has to slither in even a little bit more to try to hit you uh, with his bite. So, uh, okay, the tail does hit you, uh, hits you for 19 bludgeoning damage, but you can see it like kind of gets further in on the ship. Now it's like resting, like on the boat, and that entire side of the ship is starting to bend down, and uh, the wing is the wing on the left side is submerged. And you're all kind of at an incline right now. Um, everybody on the ship, give me a DC 14 dex saving throw. Oh, I, I just really want to lean on the guy I'm next to. Is that a possibility? Oh, <laughs> God. Sure. Uh, you can do that. Um, I could see. Can I see this happening? I just asked for danger sense. Will that apply to this? Yes. Okay. So this would be at advantage. So, Cerebella, you lean on this rower right here, <laughs> and he goes flying down, and he's, like, oh. in the water. He's he's He grabs onto the wing, but, like, he's no longer uh, rowing, and he's, like, clinging on for dear life right there. Okay. I tried. I did try. I rolled 11. I didn't do very well, but I was, like, I thought maybe he could help me. I'm too big. And Bacall also uh falls prone and is sliding off and he grabs onto the edge right here um i'm gonna say the rest of these rowers are fine uh cerebella you failed yeah even i mean i did i rolled straight like you know i didn't <laughs> use him as much support but i guess me falling into him was enough to knock him off balance too so uh, Cerebella, Bacall, and the, the one rower down here are effectively prone, hanging on to the side of the raven. Uh, everybody else made their saving throws? No, I failed. No, I failed. okay. Baz, uh, you fall prone, and uh, we'll say you're, you're over here by Bacall. You're also effectively prone. I think that does it for all of that. Uh, the beast is going to bite at Cerebella. And I guess it would be an advantage. An 18 to hit. Mm-hmm. You are going to take 18 piercing damage. You're now grappled and restrained by its by its bite. And that'll bring us to Baz. Um all right. <laughs> um I Baz is he's I'm prone. I'm prone. I'm laying down prone. Yes. So do I have to stand up to to cast anything, correct? Is that right? You don't have so, to, but okay. <laughs> well, I think I would try maybe, but um, I'm I'm going to cast Water Walk, um, which is a thirty foot uh, range, and I can get up to uh, up to ten creatures in thirty feet. So I think that that can give me get me um, our like the whole party plus Bicol, and let me see one. 5, 10, 15, 20. If it means they think you don't need to cast it on me. No, it, it doesn't really because um, there's a, and there's one rower that's in that's in that range. The the one, I think, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, the one that's next to Baldwin. And um, that uh, gives you the ability to walk across any liquid surface like water, blah, 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 as if it were solid ground. Um, 
10 willing creatures you can see within range. It lasts for an hour. All right. Uh, sorry, which of the party members? You said uh, Bacall it's, and the rest of your party. It's the party, Bacall, and then I think the rower next to Baldwin is in range. Okay. It's 30 feet. Um, uh, I think you could get this other guy down here, too, that's about to fall in the water. Oh, that's Six, fine. Five, yeah, get him if, 10, if it reaches. 20, 25, 30. Yeah, he's just in range, so you could get him, too. All right. Um, and then I would like to um, move away from where I am. Oh, let me see if I have anything else I can do. Um, uh, that's that's all. I'm going to move. Uh, let's see. I can. So I stood up. Is that half my movement? Standing up is half of your movement. Um... So I go five, ten. Can I like move over? Oh, that's. I'm just going to move. I'm just going to stay where I am. <laughs> it might, <laughs> no, I'll move it might be the best course. Okay, you move <laughs> there. Uh, you're yeah. safe right there. I'm safe. All right. Well, relatively. Because this <laughs> guy the, is about to pop up. <laughs> oh. And this whirlworm that you're looking at right now is twice the size that the other one is. And its colors are inverted. So it's got nice. like an aquamarine face. Its fins are red. Um, and it just like lets out this like booming sound that carries across the hull of the courier. And um, you can see like all the rowers like fall to, fall backwards as its voice just carries like a seismic wave over the ship clack um kind of readies himself with their uh with their weapon what does clack usually use as a weapon normally they use uh the oh, lightning what's... launchers or gauntlets depending i'm sure that they're doing the the yeah. ranged so, so it's got these these this lightning launcher weapon fires that off it seems to repel right off the side of the creature and um there's a little bit of electric discharge that bounces back at clack and and electrifies her armor and knocked out for a second but then the beast reaches down and grabs onto clack with its mouth this just just this huge maw that's just ringed like swords up and down on the tops and the bottom gums. And they bear down and rip right into her armor and like pull her from the ship and immediately dives under the water. And you can see that that red fin pick, poking up over the, the surface of the water. Um, she's kind of being buoyed a bit by the water walk spell, but is in the mouth of the creature and is being pulled uh, incredible distance away to the northeast and you can see clack is, is is fighting not unconscious not dead it is like firing these electrical attacks right at the face of the beast but seems to be unfazed and then that will take us to uh bacall Call pulls himself up onto the, the boat and then he runs over here grabs a bit of rope and like tosses it down uh, to his his crewmate down here and he says grab on grab on I'm not going to lose you damn it I'll pull you up just grab hold Zilof it is your turn Zilof goes, oh, a clock! But I see that we're not going to be able to get anywhere until we get rid of this boy. They're in melee range, correct? This mm -hmm. creature? Yeah. All right, I get to here and I rage. Bring out my great axe. Let's go ahead and do my rage little thing first. Boop. 
rage and I get a D8. Oops, I'll take the first one, whatever that was. An eight. Okay, so as I rage, bolts of light shoot from my chest. Another creature of your choice that uh, you can see within 30 feet must succeed a con save. So this creature has to make a con save of 15. All right. Uh, and Tux has gifted the group a player reroll. Thank you. 18. Okay, so nothing happens with that. Um, but I am raging. And I'm going to just do reckless attacks on this bad boy. Great axe coming out. Here we go. Two attacks. Uh, 16 to hit. That will hit. Uh, this plus two. So 15 total for the first strike. Second, uh, 22 to hit, hit. So let me do the damage for the second attack. So uh, 17 points for the second attack. As I'm swinging down, trying to chomp at this guy, at this serpent's neck. Trying to take him out, just cleaving. Definitely large wounds that are opening up uh, around the neck area. Uh, not quite enough to behead the beast, but um, you can tell it's it's roaring in pain, and your attacks are quite effective. Um, it's going to bring us to the third whirl worm, which is going to pop up kind of at the back of the right wing, and... Is this going to go to town on these poor rowers on the right-hand side? So, a tail attack. On one is going to uh, just smashes into the backside, and it's just like whiplash for all of you. The whole boat kind of gets popped up into the air for a moment. Um, you all can give me a DC 14 dexterity saving throw. If I'm grappled and restrained, do I have uh, to do that as well? You're okay. Um... <laughs> Relatively speaking. <laughs> I have an 18. I'm good. This thing uh, on the back side is going to get popped up and it's going to take a little bit of bludgeoning damage just from, uh, it's not able to like hold on to the deck. So he takes like 10 points of damage. Uh, let's see. We'll have Bacall do one too. Bacall, you can do it. Yeah, he manages to hang on. He's still focused on the task of trying to repel up his uh, his crewmate there. Did anybody fail that? Guess everyone is good. Whirlworm uh, then is going to bite at this other crewmate. So one man down. Second one. Uh oh. Oh, okay. There's only it's a, a ten. But everything is moving just a little slow on my side. So the the bite, this one, this guy's okay. Um, he manages to like he he takes his oar and he like thrusts it forward like Luke Skywalker did with the piece of bone and the 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 rancor, and it's like now it's just got the bite is just stuck. He's got that oar preventing him from biting down. Uh, that'll bring us back to the top of the round, and it is Baldwin's turn. Me with my movement, I'm gonna get right up in its face and like give a compliment to the guy. That's because or something, or but they're probably gonna need that back eventually. One second, and I'll just point the muzzle right down its gullet and fire twice. Uh, with my bonus action, I'll mark it as a planar warrior thing, and uh, I'll use Zephyr Strike and get advantage on this attack roll. Put 
poop. 23 to hits. Hits. And since it hits, I'll also use Slayer's Prey to do all of the things. Bring us to a grand total of 37 points of piercing damage with the first shot. And then wow. I will fire again because he's big and nasty. For 13 to hit. That one will miss. And that's it. All right. Uh, Cerebella, you are grappled in the mouth of the northernmost whirlworm. Yeah, I don't really like that. So I'm going to send some magic missiles into it from, like, being in its mouth. That's, I don't know how else to, you know, attack this guy. So I'll cast it at, um, I'll upcast it at third level. So let me do that. All right. I don't know if it. We'll see if it. It just rolls the one. Okay. <laughs> so I'll. I guess I'll roll them separately. <laughs> that works. Two, one, two, two. <laughs> three, and then two more because I upcast it. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, fifteen. <laughs> Gosh, oh, there we go. 20 points of damage. So, oh. uh, what do your missiles look like? Oh, I I would think that they would look like, you know, like little sparklers. You know, like if someone's doing some sort of interpretive dance with the sparklers. So, her magic missiles look like little sparklers coming out. Mm -hmm. So, as they're going down uh, the throat of the whirlworm, they're, they're popping up. Up, out the sides of its gills, one through its eye, one right through the top of its head, and it's just like, and like, like I'm fireworks. a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah. That song is kind of playing as the missiles go off. So yeah, <laughs> the neck just kind of rolls back and it rises as its whole body kind of arcs backwards and then flops backwards, and it just falls right into the sea. Get a big splash, and its body starts to sink. It's taken away by the the maelstrom down into the port. Am I able to get out of its mouth or do I get taken out yes. too? Yes. Uh no, oh, you okay. you as soon as you hit it uh for the 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 kill, you're able to plop down onto uh the hull or onto the All right. deck. Okay. Well, then I'm going to try to just move here and pick up an oar. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. That's what I got. That'll bring us to Baz. <laughs> um so the the other one is is still like on top of the the boat a little bit and pulling the boat is it the boat off balance now that like what's happening with this yep the boat is off off balance you know it's it, the the weight on the front end the anchor just fell off and so the front end pops up mm -hmm. and is now more weight is on the back end um, I don't really know what to do. Uh, I can't get that close. I can't get close to him to do much. I think I could cast, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Eldridge blast him. So let's see, one, five, 10, 15, 20, that'll, that'll reach. It's 120. Uh, that's a 20 to hit. And give me some damage. Oh, that's and, about as good a blast as you can get. I know, right? And I think that's it because I'm. Oh, I have two beams at fifth level, so I can hit him again. I, do I? Do I have to hit an attack or just more damage? Uh, it's a second uh, attack, so okay, hit the attack again. Uh, 19 hits and another 10 wow 10. that was really nice lucky job, Baz. i'll stay in the front i'm gonna be like <laughs> do you have music playing for your blasts <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> the call uh, oh go ahead yeah. uh, actually i said I, i'm gonna move up 
um, sort of to be like by the rower here. I don't know. Maybe I can block. That's all. All right. Bacall starts to uh, pull this fellow back up onto the boat, uh, manages to get him back onto the top of the deck, uh, rescuing him. Um, here you go. I saved your oar for you. You can you can do, do some rowing again. He'll uh, take it back from you and uh, get back to the matter at hand. As Bacall uh, notices, you know his attention is drawn to the southern part of the boat. There, as we turn to Ziloff. Uh Ziloff is going to, uh, if I can. I'm going to say that there are javelins all over the ship at this point on the ground. Just, I think you brought uh, a bunch of them onto the boat. I brought a bunch. Of, I have some already That's in my back. You had brought a bunch <laughs> There's of them tons. Off. It's just like someone like got a toothpick box, just em emptied it all over the floor. So it's just javelins everywhere. Uh, but either way, uh, Zilof is running, going to run up five. 35 and javelin time. Oh, actually, there, bonus action, I'm going to have them do a uh, DC 15 con save, please. Uh, 22. Not today. Okay. Uh, two javelins are going out. Sixteen and twenty-four to hit. Play sixteen hit. Both hit. Last time. Okay. So here's the damage. In total. Uh oh, twenty total damage. Because oh I'm just like. That's pretty impressive. You both rolled maximum damage on your dice for both rolls. You're setting a dangerous precedent for us to try to fill. <laughs> <laughs> there are two javelins sticking out of its hide, and it is uh, screaming and lashing about. Um, it is going to try to bring its tail down. On to Baldwin. And a critical oh. hit. Uh, DC 16 strength check. I'm so strong. Or save. You're a strong plasmoid? Come on. I'm, a slung, I'm so strong. So you make it. You're not knocked prone. But anyways... <laughs> 27 bludgeoning damage. I just imagine he goes like flat, like very, just like a pancake, and then just as the tail comes up, floop. Ow. And the bite is a 13. That will miss. Baldwin, it is your go. Uh, I'm going to mark it again for Planar Warrior. Oh, I got to make a con save. One second. Boop, boop, boop. We're okay. We still got it. And I will shoot twice. Sharp shotishly. There we go. <laughs> Easy First for you one to say. is a miss. Second one is 15 to hit. Hits. Nice. For a little extra something. Or 26 points. <laughs> the musket blasts and shoots half of this thing's face off as it drops backwards. The The rowers of the courier, uh, they're moving like 40 feet around. As this thing drops back, they just very quickly put it in their wake and pull away from it. And so we will drop you from the initiative... As Bacall is bringing uh, his crewmate back up, he says, um, We lost two! We lost two!
Well, we have to go after. We have to go after Clack. They were still fighting. Why are I we not going? Him. Why? We have to go. Go after Clack. I saw them been dragging off to the northeast of here. Yeah, it was a really big one too. It looked a little different. So maybe we just keep an eye out for the the red, the red fin. Because I'm I'm just trying to like we were by the portal for the Mimir, but now the Mimir's gone too, right? Because Clack had it. Oh, so. so mm -hmm. Clack sure does have that Mimir now, mm -hmm. doesn't? Don't <laughs> they? We gotta go find her. <laughs> him. <laughs> we gotta go find him. Bacall moves to the front of the courier, and he's just like looking out. And that the 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 rowers get the boat like out of the maelstrom and over to uh, steadier waters, and they're kind of just waiting to hear what Bacall's verdict is going to be. And he's looking out at the horizon, and you could see dark storm clouds in that direction, and electrical discharge like kind of shooting down, kind of creating these arcs of azure blue. Um, light in the distance and he says he's like kind of mumbling to himself and you can see his hand kind of shaking again trembling Grakenok that's the last destination that I sailed to before, before it all went wrong, before I was marked with the curse. Crack it was enough. a mistake to bring me along. It was a mistake is, to come out here. What are you talking about? What's Grakenok? Uh, Grakenok is the name of the village that, uh, in his tale, he had said that he used to ferry people back and forth. Uh, so, can we go get our friend? You can do whatever you I'm like. To... I'm going to head back to Glorium. I already oh, lost only... one man today. Well, it's only a mistake if you give up now. This is your chance to face the shadow in your heart. All that stuff that the lady with the seaweed hair was telling you. Right? This is it. You go back there again and overcome this. And it starts the road to uh re redemption right right still off is that how it works that's the road mm -hmm. to redemption no yeah, redemption that's the one we want uh yeah I, we 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 can't stop now our, our our friend they're still fighting out there we, we need your help we need we need a we need to go get them back all right, choose, we're, we're, choose who you'd like to make your persuasion check. Now is the time to look amends for your past mistakes. Yeah. I don't believe in you. <laughs> Please, the man believe in you. I don't want making a persuasion check. I think I have the highest, but only two. Can we, can we give a bit of help? Oh. You're so eager. Yes, you're definitely yeah. helping. No. Uh, <laughs> One of you can make a persuasion check. Can I cast guidance? Uh, you can cast guidance. I'll do it, but mine is not great. Is yours okay? Still off? Or should I? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it with some guidance. Okay. We'll see how persuasive. Then a 1d4. Sorry, I'm very slow with typing. <laughs> you know, we do have a reroll in chat. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want me? I, I could try it yes. again. It's probably still yes. not going to be great, but. No, it's, it's going to be great this it's time. It's either okay. this or it's mutiny. Oh, come on. Come on. No. That's the exact same mutiny. number. Time <laughs> up. So the reroll is being Just used. Oh, we use the reroll. I it's just I'm not persuasive. <laughs> oh, that's so painful. I guess mutant it is. <laughs> you rolled an eight on the second one. 
I did. Yeah, seven and an eight. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know you weren't seeing them. So, he points in the direction of Glorium, and all of the all of the crew. You can see them solemnly are really, they're nodding their heads, and they're beginning to turn the courier around. Doug. What did you say? The thing. He's, he doesn't know what to do. He, he knows that we need to get going. We need to get the clock. Um, you're letting someone out there die, damn it. We need to get to him. Um, I don't know. I can yeah, fly I out there. I can, we, I can transform and get somebody out there. Can somebody ride on me and, and we can go and see if we can spot where they are? If I transform into, if I shape, if I wild shape into uh, like a. I mean, we do have water walk. Yeah. Okay, I don't think we could run that fast, though. <laughs> can we? Well, let's yeah, see. It's I up to an hour. Well, what do you want to run? I think that's, yeah, if these guys aren't going to be helpful, then maybe that's what we got to do. Mm hmm. Just a quick question, though. Do you have the ability to cast it again later so we can walk back, or are we, are we just swimming back? Uh, I can cast it again at this point. <laughs> I, 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 I think we can do that, you know, in the back of our I'm, minds. I'm going to give you, uh, we'll go ahead and do a uh, bolstering magic. I'm going to roll D3. See if I could get you a skill or a spell slot back. A three. So if you have a level three... Or higher, you get that spell slot back. Oh, and you could do it. We, I, this is what we're doing. Let's do it. That so. did it. Thank you. I think I can do it. I feel really confident now. Uh, oh, yeah, good. <laughs> you just have to be like sort of close to me when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't want you to get hit. That's that's the main thing, I think. Also, when did you like? No, it's not time right now. We got to go. We got to go. Well. You're not going to help us. Thanks it's for the help so thing. far. I don't even have to think about it. It just happens, so it's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're going. I'm going to look back one more time if that changes anything. Anybody want to come <laughs> with us? Uh, no one is eager to jump up at that prospect. And so uh, uh, Captain Bacall doesn't look back. Um you could just see you could see his like hand is shaking, he's trembling. Um, and he just says, Go. The sooner that you're off the boat, the better off you'll be. Save uh, your friend. We should steal an oar. <laughs> well you're down jump off. you're down yep. a person, right? So I wish I could be of help. I, I uh I'm gonna cast a unseen servant and leave my unseen servant to help them row <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> but they could just keep going in circles without them. Like, there you go. You, he, you can't see him, but he's going to try his best to help. So you go try to row the ship, help this coward back to land, and we're going to go walk on the water. So here we go. So All right. Wow. That, guy that, that was really nice of you, Sarah Bella. <laughs> I did just call him a coward, but you know, if you think it's nice, that's, you know, that's, that's nice. <laughs> so you all let yourselves off of the courier and you touch down your feet, making contact with the surface of the water and finding uh, kind of the uh, strange sensation of not passing through it, but instead standing on top of it. Um, and the, the courier, you see that drifting away from you as uh, they're rowing making progress you can see the uh the head of the courier the the raven face kind of look back uh sadly at you and sorrowfully up at bacall uh who has lost his heart um but they continue to sail towards clearer skies than where you are headed and you begin to tread on the water, the um, the waves, you know, lapping up and soaking your clothing as you move forward into uh, a very um, 
a very violent storm up ahead. Is this salt water or like? Fresh um, water? yeah, I guess it would be salt water. It's a sea, oh. so uh, it's so drying for the skin. Probably bad on the the armor that some of you are <laughs> wearing and such. I feel really thirsty. To... <laughs> You probably are starting to like shrink down in size. All the <laughs> reverse osmosis. I reverse on. osmosis as a filter god. Uh, as we're walking, I'll uh walk over. Uh, I'll I'll touch Sarabella and cast cure wounds on on you. Oh, that is really awesome that you can do that. Uh, I appreciate that. Hold on, that is what did you get? Ten. You heal 10 points. Oh, nice, thank you. I'll take that. So a little bit of healing happening as you're moving out. Yeah, I got tail whipped and bit. That thing was nasty. I know. And then you were really nice and left a servant there. That was really nice of you. Well, I was kind of rubbing salt in the wound. I called him a coward and left him help because he's too, you know, pitiful to do it himself. But if you think I was being nice, then maybe, maybe I was. Maybe it was nice. You walk for a short distance, maybe 30 minutes or so. Half the time on the uh, water walk spell has expired. And um, you can see in the distance, and the, the storm is like overhead. You're in the shadow of the clouds. Oh, and I see Chris is here. Thank you for the sub, 30 months in a row. Hope you had a good drive back to Nebraska. Hopefully it was uneventful. <laughs> Wish I were back in Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Bella, do you know Chris? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> up ahead you can see a small boat being tossed by the bay's choppy waters the vessel uh, seems to be taking on water um, that is lapping up and 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 getting itself uh, right inside uh, threatening to sink it underneath its waves you can make out that there's one individual in the craft it looks like a young young lad couldn't be any older than 15, 16 years old. Kind of a, a floppy hat on, overalls, and he's um, he's doing his best to try to uh, take hold of the ship. He's got like a little sail that's just being pulled, and uh, the sail is probably doing more damage than good as it's uh, chaotically whipping this thing about. But despite that, he is doing his, he's putting his best efforts into keeping himself afloat. Um, but it is clear that he is in over his head and that his dinghy is doomed. Oh, nice alliteration. I like that. The dinghy is doomed. <laughs> well, okay, so we better go help this guy. Maybe we walk over there and help. I mean, we'll run. So we'll helpful, run. Right? Yeah, we can run. We'll, we'll run over there. Yeah, yeah, we're out. Yeah, we're coming. Hey, we're coming. Don't attack us. We're actually. It's creepy. I know. We're walking on water. We're godlike in that way. You know, it's pretty <laughs> fancy. So you go charging over there, um, and. The the young boy takes notice of you, and he calls out, and uh, he says, Hey, I need help. I need help. It's going to take the boat. How, how are you standing on the water? Like. <laughs> Magic. Uh, oh, God. Please help me. <laughs> oh. what, what, do need, what, what do we need to do? How do we help? So his ship is taking on an incredible amount of uh, water. Like, you guys are all standing there. You, you, you'd be tossed around, too, just because you're standing on the water doesn't mean you're not affected by the high winds and the there's lightning that's shooting down from the clouds up above and hitting and, you know. 
hitting a little localized areas on the surface of the water. And Do we see the 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 other sea creature anywhere in this area? Are we um make a perception check. Uh, it's a 20. Um, off maybe further to the northeast, you do see another green fin poking up and out of the water. Oh, I, I, I tell them, I tell everybody, I see it that way. It's beyond the boat. Like, can we get on this boat and use this boat to go <laughs> and chase after the them? Or is the boat too small? To do that. Um, there is enough room for the four of you to get into the boat. Does anybody want to try to help sail this boat with this kid on there and some of us can keep walking or? Oh, well, first we gotta get the boat so it's not sinking in the water. And yeah. like, I'll stow my weapon and then like three arms just come up and he's like, don't worry, I'll help. And like they'll make little like little bucket hands and start scooping water out. Okay, so you're scooping the water out. What are the rest of you doing to help? Oh, oh boy. Um, let me like rummage and see what I got here. <laughs> I don't think I'm very strong to be able to help hold anything in place or anything like that. Is is this a sailboat? Then it has a. A sail yeah, to he's, it, he's, or yep. Okay. Mm. If the sail's going wild, I'll try to hold it in place where they tell me to hold it to steady the ship. Okay, so you're trying to take control of the sail. How about Baz and Cerebella? Um, I mean I could I could help scoop if there's something to scoop with, scoop water. Okay. Yeah. Well, are there any like holes, any problems with, cause I have, um, a block of wax. So, you know, I could try to shove that if they're, if we're taking on water and some, some holes, I don't know what, what's going on there, but that would be something like if water's coming in, okay. I could try to steal it. So I'm going to look for three of you to succeed. To succeed on DC 13 skill choice skill checks of whatever you choose uh, to represent your actions that you've decided to take. So we'll start with Zilloff. You're uh, taking trying to help the young lad take control of the sails. What would you like to do for that? Uh, athletics. All right. 24. All right, you you are good. You help him steady that sail and capture the wind in a way that. Um, leads to less chaotic um, shuffling about of the boat. Uh, Cerebella, you have a bit of wax that you're going to use to plug up some of the, the damage. Kind of looking for damage and and then trying to like kind of shove the wax in and seal it up. I don't know what kind of a skill that would be, honestly. What does that sound like to you? Um, maybe do a sleight of hand check. Okay, that seems right. Twelve? Twelve won't quite be enough to be effective <laughs> to consider it a success just now. Uh, but we still have Baldwin and Baz. So Baldwin, you're helping to scoop up and get There's some of the so much water. So much water. What would you like to do? I mean, I'll probably like morph my body into a way it's kind of like a drainage funnel type of deal. So I'd say it's a very athletic feat to, you know, where you shape yourself into a very weird shape. I'll yep. say athletics. Sounds good to me. Nine. <laughs> All right. I'm also water. Oh, no. Uh, let's see what Baz can come up with here. Uh, I forget what you were. I don't know. I was thinking about helping scoop the water, but I don't, I can't, I don't think I can make my hands into anything <laughs> different. So uh, I could try that. I don't know what else I could do. Do you have any fun cantrips? Anything cantrippy that works? Um, no. Uh. 
Mm, not really. Um, but I, I could go in the water, but I don't know what I could do there other than like lift the boat up. I could try that. I could try that. Should I try that? Should I try that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> say more about that. So you're going to go like with the, you're going to try to lift the boat up. I could with... maybe. Yeah. If I were an animal in the water. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. If you turn into a water animal, you could like, uh, we could put a rope to you and you could just pull the boat. <laughs> All right, so I just go like, woo, and I I shape change into a uh, into a an octopus, a giant octopus. Okay. Slide over the I, arms, I, man. <laughs> I, so I slide under the water, and then I go under, and I uh, I, I I try to kind of like re like steady the boat first with various okay. tentacles. Okay, I think I get it. Uh, give me uh, strength <laughs> athletics with the octopus's stats. Oh, God. What are they? Um... Okay, so that's a plus three. Um, it would be a 10. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh man! I think I, is it right because it's a plus. It's a, it's a plus three to whatever I'm rolling, right? If I'm reading it right, I mean that's how the stat block says. So that's how you do it. A reroll would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. <laughs> or, or multiple. But oh my saying. gosh, we we uh. all did so. I mean, you did good. You did great. You did a really good job studying that <laughs> sale. But uh, should have given of... myself. I should have given that. myself guidance. Yeah, I don't think oh, looking is going to help me very much. I don't think you can cast the spell when you're um, an octopus. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not enough to buoy the boat with all of your uh, companions <laughs> and such <laughs> in it. Oh, and that's so, right. You're all on the boat. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, as you're, you're struggling with the arms of the octopus to keep it buoyed, but as you do so, the front end just cracks and splits <gasps> off of it and uh, tosses uh, the young boy off into the water. Um, and he's like kind of, help, help, help. The rest of you, I think, are still under water walk, so like you're not actually mm -hmm. actively sinking, but he is as he goes oh. under. Mm -hmm. Can you choose to actively sink in water, on water walk? That's a good question. Well, maybe the octopus can save him. Oh, uh, oh, oh, are you are you also still under water walk? So you're like a floating, like an octopus walking on water. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It doesn't say if I if I need to drop it, but. Uh... It, it just says if you if you if you target a creature submerged in a liquid, the spell carries a target to the surface of the water at a rate of sixty feet per round. So I say I the, the the wording of willing, I will say that you can negate the effect on you as to decide you not want, to be whenever okay. you decide not to have it anymore. But then it's gone as soon as you decide it's gone. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm under the water. I can grab him and lift him up for a minute. You guys are walking on the water. I'm going to have to change back and recast Water Walk on everybody again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pick him up and hold him. You're okay. You're okay. So I, I switch back into Baz form and I, I cast Water Walk again and it hits everybody, uh, including this guy this time. Okay. Um, so you've got him. You've saved him. He's in the arms of Zilloff and he just says, my, my boat. Damn it. <laughs> Took me a long time to save up for that boat. You're alive. There you go. Get your sea legs. <laughs> I'm going to leave them on, put them on the ground, on the water. Whoa. What are you doing out here in the storm? Uh, I was trying to make my way back to Glorium. And the storm beset me, and I, there were... There were others 
but I'm there the were only others one that's left. On your boat, there were others? Yeah, me and two others. There's... And he, like, looks out and he points at the fin that's emerging up out of the water. He's like, that! That! As the mouth of the sea serpent rips up out of the water and is going to go in for a strike against... One of you. Gonna be Zilloff. That's good. You just shook your head like, yep, it's yep, coming. That's, that's who we wanted it to be, though, so it's okay. Oops. Attack roll is an 18. That'll hit. Seventeen piercing damage, and you are grappled and restrained. Okay. Uh, it's going to lash out with its tail. No, not against you again. <laughs> I'm sorry, because it really seems to want it to Maybe be. It really wants one. it to be him. Uh, we will say. Baz is the giant octopus currently. I, I had to change back to cast the water walk, so I'm Baz again. Okay, but... so this is just on Baz. <laughs> Tail attack 27 will hit. Yeah, that hits a little bit. Just a little bit. Make a strength saving throw. You'll take 14 bludgeoning damage. Uh, 15 strength saving. It is a 16. Uh, so that you'll be knocked uh, prone. So you're just laying like on the surface of the water uh, due to your spell, but you are effectively prone. All right. Give me a second, and I will clear the initiative here. I guess, do we do we see Clack? You do not see Clack. <laughs> Uh, well, and I was just trying to get the tail fin thing straight. So this one had same. a green, right? Okay, this one had a green fin, not a red one. Yep, it's not as big. Okay. And it doesn't have the uh, the electrical thing going on with it. The special one to clack. Where are these guys? So this isn't the special one. This is no. This is one like we've seen. Okay. The other two. Yeah. The special one had the reverse colors. Yeah. I I, I get it. You said you wanted us to roll initiative, Alex, or not yet? Yeah. Hold on. Okay. All right, you can go ahead now. It should work. All right, uh, Zilloff, you are up first. All right, I am up first. Uh, I am currently... Incapac or not, I'm uh, restrained, so I'd be rolling at disadvantage. I'm going to try to still attack this guy while I'm in its mouth. I'll use, might as well use a, uh... yeah. well, actually, first, I'm going to rage. So let me take care of that first, like always. Rage. Wild Surge. It's a two. So... Oh, I teleport 30 feet to an unoccupied space. Uh, I can use this effect each of my bonus actions. So I teleport out of its mouth right like behind it or right to the side of it. And, and I'm just laughing as I am going to recklessly attack it. 
<laughs> That's a handy little uh, doohickey. It is. Out it worked yeah. out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great axe to at advantage. And I am raging. So let's see. Oh, oh, uh, 15 to hit. I forgot if that one hit. That hits. Okay, so that will be this plus two. Oh, wow. Uh, seven points uh, for the second one. I rolled a 17 with that advantage, so that'll hit. So 11 uh, for the second. As I am slicing at its side. And then I, I'm going to use my movement to run back in front of it, kind of like daring it to bite me again. Hopefully, maybe it'll do that. <laughs> so we can just do this all over again. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Uh, Baldwin. I'm going to probably viciously shake my musket to get all the water off of it. It's like, come on, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> All right. Orca. I will mark it and fire twice. So expertly, one might say. An eight. But wait, the next one is a 15? Uh, 15 hits. That's good. A little extra damage. Four, 21. And that's it. Bears. Um, I think I'm just uh, going to try to blast it with the like I did the last one uh oh that's a natural 20 okay critical hit you say that like like it was a mistake oh yeah. oops, that was a no I'm trying to figure out what do I do now do I double the damage I D double the dice okay the dice so that is um it's a four so that's eight that's eight damage for that and then I have the second one well, roll and the that's... roll the damage again. Oh. oh, oh, oh! Sorry. Okay. Ah, I just thought I doubled the damage. I doubled the dice. Two. <laughs> that's better. The other way. <laughs> and then I rolled a second attack. Should I keep that one? Uh, nineteen. Yep. Yeah, nineteen mm -hmm. hits. All right, and then that is the damage on that is uh, seven. Seven points. All right. All right, that will bring us to Cerebella. Well, I know they don't like sparklers, and I'm hesitant to cast any lightning while we're on the water, so I'm just going to do Magic Missile. Um, I'll do it at third level again, because then I get a lot of little sparkles. <laughs> so we'll do that. And I should just type it in, but it's more fun to have all these little pink dice yeah. popping up here. So. <laughs> All right, so what is that? Four, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sounds good. 15. These sparklers don't fell the creature, but it is wounded as it takes its turn. Um, it'll go for the bite at Zilloff. So is this at that. advantage? Was it reckless? It's at that advantage, yeah. Okay. 27. Yeah. For 27 damage. Uh, grappled and restrained. And it will swing its tail around as it's got you in its mouth. It's going to pull you back and try to battering ram slam you with the tail. That doesn't sound good. An advantage as well. That'll be 14 bludgeoning. And that'll bring us to Zilof's turn. Uh, 
Uh, bonus action. I am booping out of its mouth. Going right back to its side. We're going to do reckless attacks. <gasps> uh, 14. I don't think that hits. Does it? Uh, so 14 will hit. Oh, great. All right, here's the damage for that one. Plus two. Uh, so 14 points for the first hit. And 17 for the second one, as I'm trying to chop this thing in half. Hits. Or was that your damage? I'm sorry. I don't know why I rolled twice. I only, I only hit once. So I'm sorry. It was 15 total for damage for my turn. Okay. Sounds good. And then I'm going to run up in front of it and start shaking my butt at it again. All right. That'll bring us to Baldwin. And I'll do the exact same thing that last time. Mark it, fire twice. First one is a 21 to hit. That will hit. For some damage. For damn 34 points of damage. Shot blasts its face off. Thing drops backwards and sinks down below the, the surface of the sea. Let's keep a lookout for those things next time. Yeah, that one came out of nowhere. Oof. I will go up to you, and I will cast two Cure Wounds, one at first and one at second. And as you do that, I will do a full string. A little magic on you as well, in return. So, first one, you get... I'll just tell you the grand total after it's done. You get... 13 points back. Thank you. And you get a second level uh, spell slot back. Would you look at another? Just imagine you guys patting each other's shoulders. Uh, like, would here you, you go. Here would you, go. Would, you <laughs> like, would you like another pat? Sorry, would you like another pat? Apparently my system is rejuvenative. You're calling to you. Uh, he said, uh, I'm sorry, you said how much for that first uh, cure? So the cure wounds for first total? healing was 13. And you 13. know what? I'll just do it again. So you gave me another slot. Might yeah. as well use it. I'll take it. I'll take so, it. Yeah. So go. I'm, I'm going to be shaking my butt at these guys a lot, it seems like. A big old hug for 12 points. Ah. That's a, that's that's a nice hug. hug. Thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling good. Uh, I was. Hey, kid. Uh, there's no land, right, in sight. There's nothing. We're just in the ocean, pretty much. Yes. Uh, you were heading in the direction of the kind of the heart of the storm, which mm. is taking you to the northeast. Um, um, we'll see at this point, like, from where you're at, uh, you could very faintly kind of see, like, the shoreline. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, very tiny silhouettes of buildings and colorful houses and such looks like there's maybe a port well sure. more, it's a long hike back to reckon that guy so so tell us who are you what do you do what's your name why were you on the water uh the boy tells you that his name is kai um and his uh his little ship uh, ferries cargo uh, between Grakenok and Glorium. Uh, and they're on like just a just a little courier run. Uh, take some of the uh, kind of worked goods of the Bariar uh, from Grakenok over to Glorium. Uh, blankets and clothing and things like that. Things of that nature. I guess you've been busier than usual since they don't have any boats over there anymore. 
uh, he will admit that that was uh, part of what enticed his crew to head to Glorium was that there was more of a premium on the delivery of these goods and seemed like a good way to kind of recoup their investment in the boat. Yeah, sorry about that. I guess we're just not very good sailors. We we really tried. Thought we were going to be helpful. Yeah. Well, either way, I mean, you have two options. You can you can run back to shore there or stick with us. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're hunting one of those things, uh, a bigger one, though. You, you see it around anywhere? I mean, he'll he'll point to, like, the shoreline and say, like, that's Grackenock there. I... That's the direction that it went in. Really, oh. your two choices kind of boil down. Well, to that's mind. good. I guess we're all yeah. headed the same direction then, huh? Let's, uh, you're good. You're all good. Have you seen these things like on, on, out of the water at back at home? Um, he says that he hasn't personally seen them. He's just heard the older sailors spin up tales about uh facing them or seeing them at sea he grew up most of his life not believing them to be real certainly not as frequent as they have been recently well now you have a story to tell of your own i guess yeah when they're when they're mentioned are they are is their folklore connected or myths or one of those like they're harbingers of something or other um he says that he's heard of them being um kind of elder creatures from uh iskard um, okay a lot of the sailors uh, suggest that uh, besting one is sort of a, uh, uh, you know, mark of pride. It's a, it's a, a thing that a notch in your, uh, your belt, so to speak, of your prowess on the seas. If you can, if you can survive, if you can outmaneuver one, and if you can kill one, um, then that puts you in like the elite. Um, so so s- that gives us three notches in our belts at this point. You heard us here first. I think we're all lit, Alice. Boy, this water sure is rough. <laughs> so, okay. Either way, we got we got to get. I think we're gonna. Yeah, we're all ready. We got to keep on running, huh? Mm-hmm. Let's keep going. All right. Kai has little choice uh, without the boat, uh, so he's running alongside uh, you while he has the the benefit of your wind or your water walk spell. Um, sure. So you charge. Beef. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say before we get mechanically, before we get any further, I could only use uh, my bolstering on one creature um, per long rest, as far as like the same creature. So. I'm gonna use my last one uh, to on uh, Sarabella to see if we could get you back a level before we. Oh, that's a yeah. Good that's a... thank you. A three, so you got a third level back. Thank you. Might be able to use some more sparklers or fly. Flying is nice. <laughs> All right. Before we get, I guess, to the shore, I'll ask again, has he ever heard of someone named Valen? Valen. Was that the... Yep. Oracle? That... Uh... No. No, it's the... Yeah, I guess the Oracle from the Captain's Last Journey. Yeah. The doomsayer or whatever you call them. Um let's see. He'll say he's that name sounds familiar. Um oh come on. Uh 
Well, that sucks. Uh, I'll take a break or something? Yeah, we're going to have to take a break because this whole thing just pooped out on me. Uh, he'll say that he's heard the name. He's not super familiar with it, but it's like... It's like a... Uh, the personification of bad luck that some of the sailors talk about. Uh, but not that they not that he thinks it's a real person, but like they talk about it as if uh if, if Valen's Valen's shadow uh besets you, like that's a bad omen. That's a that's a reason to not to go to see that day. But yes, we'll take a break here while I try to get this back up and running. So thanks everybody for hanging out with us. I see you out there. Tux, uh thanks for for hanging out with us in person last weekend and now back here virtually. So uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes, hopefully. Okay, we are back. Thanks for bearing with us here. Uh, playing Planescape, Turn of Fortune's Wheel. And our characters are without any of the boats that they may be... <laughs> could have had access to but luckily they have a water walk spell so they're able to um cross the sea on foot uh they managed to recover a young lad named kai who was out lost at sea um and was in the uh in the wake of the the great beast uh the whirlworm that had absconded with clack and the crew uh, has a pretty good sense of where that thing went off to. Uh, it led it off into the direction of Grakenok, which is a Bariar uh, village on the coast here of the bay. Um, they are currently walking towards this village with its colorful homes and varied goat and sea serpent carvings on the homesteads. Um... The village would probably look to be a cozy little stop off um, for the characters if it were not for the uh, very evident destruction um, that has been laid uh, in the wake of the beast. You can see crumbling structures that look like they've just been hit um, with an, a massive amount of force. Uh, uh, the the docks themselves look like um, something had burrowed up out of the water and right onto the land and just uh, just this bulldozer effect right into town and there are dark very dark storm clouds up overhead where electrical discharge is kind of like shooting down these just streaks streaking arcs of blue are touching down and hitting the tops of some of these buildings uh there is panic, uh, as you can see a few Baryar defenders uh, with uh, javelins uh, in hand, harpoons, um, seem to be chucking them at a uh, kind of further into the village at some, some, some creature. Um, just based on the general panic, uh, many of the, uh, the young... Uh, children, uh, the elderly are kind of scooting out from the center of town, whereas the armed uh, individuals are are trying to trying to play a guardianship role uh, to give everyone cover to get out of danger. And so that is what you see as you are stirring yourselves, your feet kicking up out of the water and landing now on dry land on the sand of the shore. Uh, maybe 30 feet away from you as you were, you, you're kind of coming up out of the water near the docks of this village. You can see Clack's body, uh, badly bruised and damaged, just laying on the shoreline, lifeless. I, I run up to him. I run up to the, the Clack. Sort of, you know, kneel down and sort of, you know, take a look and see what's happening. See if... We can do anything. Uh, Clack is very shallowly breathing. 
um, looks to have sustained a, quite a bit of damage, um, is coughing up a bit of water. I'll say, help, help, help me, somebody help me fix them. So like, can I, um, I will, uh, cast a, uh, I'll cast Cure Wounds, um, second level, and that it's a uh, 13 points of healing if it works. So you're like, come on, come on, stay with us. Oh, Clax, uh, breathing seems to stabilize a bit as you discharge the healing magic into them. What happened? Oh, you can't breathe. Yeah, so try to get the water out of the lungs and that sort of thing. <laughs> so at this point, I'm just going to insert and say Clack is not with us. And so Clack is going to remain mm -hmm. unconscious for the remainder of the session, but okay. is uh, alive. must have been a very traumatizing trip for poor Clack. Maybe just, you know, some time and rest. And Meanwhile, are they fighting another one of those things in the middle of the town? Is that what we're seeing over here? Now there's only one way to find out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think asking is a good way to find out. <laughs> or we have to go to where the people are. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to move. move Come forward. on, don't you want a fourth knot in your belt? Can we ask Kai? Uh, is there? Do you know? I mean, is he, are you from here? Do you know your way around here? Where is the? Is there a place where the? I don't know. Like somebody in charge who might be trying to lead a defense at this point somewhere. Uh, he would just point to the many barriers that are charging to the square with weapons and say, oh, people, right now, uh, it, uh, command and leadership is shared, so he'll go and pick up a javelin. He's going to hurry to the center of town. Oh, well, there is some enthusiasm on that. Uh... <laughs> well, and like, Kind of like, not like rings himself off, like does all the salt bar just goes to the side. No time like the present. We'll pretty much muster up and charge straight forward. Yep. I all will right. hang behind just a little bit. I want to see if the Mimir is with Clack before I join my friends. Um, make an investigation check. Okay. All right. Uh, you see it poking up out of the sand. Um, it earlier had a little bit of like an emerald or a aquamarine kind of glow in its um, eyes that is dimmed a bit, but you see it uh, poking up and out of the sand, and you're able to go and retrieve that if you'd like. All right. I will, but I'm going to put it in Clack's pack. Like, okay. I'm not going to take it with me. I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't lost. So, so I'll find it, dust it off, and kind of stick it in a safe pocket. Sounds good. And so, then I'll follow behind, play the hero. All right. So the group is uh, charging forward and getting within view. You can see uh, the... The beast, the behemoth of a whirlworm that the barriars are trying to put up an offensive against. It's over 30 feet long and it towers over uh, the structures at the center of town. Um, most of the barriar defenders are not faring too well. Um, several of them lay prone on the ground, having been hit. Uh, by the smashing force of either its tail or uh, having been pierced by uh, its blade-like teeth. So, we can go ahead and roll our last initiative for the evening. 
<laughs> yeah, the picture assumes we were able to convince, you know, the sh the ship to continue to fight with us, but <laughs> Yeah, the story didn't go nice that picture. way. Yeah, nice. no. Well, yeah, but no. Mm. Try. There we are in the water running away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have everybody? Bez had a seven. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, Baldwin, you are up first. Me. Um, with my bonus action, I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike once again. But with my action, I want to try and like climb up to a higher point and kind of like tuck myself in get low and take the hide action to ready myself to fire at it when i have an opportune moment okay so you go in kind of stealth yes all right stealth check on the way uh 26 you are good and that will be it all right so the sea creature sees the group of you coming and is going to exhale a blast of thunderous energy, uh, kind of not unlike what you saw earlier when it attacked the courier. I need not Baldwin, but Baz, Cerebella, and Ziloff. Please give me a dex saving throw. And I knew I should have hung back from you guys. <laughs> oh, that was bad. All right. All right, Baz, you take 66 bludgeoning damage. Or, uh, sorry, it's thunder damage. Down. <laughs> wow. Cerebella, 33. And Zillow, 33. Oh. It's only 66. Shut up. Shut up, says the wizard. <laughs> and it takes out the side of a building that just kind of collapses and crumbles as it gets hit by that blast as well. And the thing um, is looking mighty healthy. There's maybe a couple of uh, javelins like sticking out of its side, but it is incredibly large in comparison to the ones that you have fought. Uh, Cerebella, it is your turn. Once again, I'm just going to see if I can be a hero and make it disappear. So I'm going to try casting Banishment again. Um, this time to see if I can make the big thing disappear. And it's a Charisma DC 15. It disappears. Ouch. That damn thing Ugh. shocked me. And then I'm really going to concentrate on keeping it wherever it went. So that's what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> and I can't help Baz. So I don't have any other thing. I don't have any way to help her. Him. Her. Are you a him or a her right now? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a her right now. Okay. Yeah. Her. <laughs> Can call it, yeah, Baz is, is cool with any pronouns. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, with the banishment in effect, uh, I don't believe that you're going to have any issue uh, maintaining that for one minute. Um, oh, man, I want this notch on my belt. This is going to feel pretty <laughs> darn good. <laughs> All right. Um so Baz is knocked down. Is there any healing or medicine checks that anyone wants to do in the interim here? Cure wounds at the second level. Nine points. All right, so Baz takes nine points back. 
This will make you feel better. <laughs> I'm gonna get up and be like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> I think of you as like aloe vera when you do your Which way did food. he go? <laughs> what happened? Where is he? Oh, I'm concentrating. Don't don't bother me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. What well, so nope, nope. I'm gonna go hide the gun. Do, do, do. All of the Barriar warriors are taking a uh, a breath during this respite. Um, many of them are kind of looking over at you, and they say, Well, thank the gods that you arrived when you did. Much of the village is sustained an incredible amount of damage from it, but this is this is salvageable. We can we can repair our homes. We haven't lost too many lives. Oh, whoever you are, thank you. Yeah, it, it might be. It is it coming back? It might be coming back, right? I don't know. I'm really hoping it stays away. So get ready. And if it pops it back, might be in, it's back. Can't it might be coming back. So I'm I'm just really focusing. And maybe it'll stay where it stay where you belong. Stay where you belong. I don't know how this works. Uh, I'm going to try to heal myself a little bit while <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> and I'm going to try to move off somewhere where I'm not very visible. All right. Yeah. A minute passes and it doesn't return back. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's gone. I feel like uh -huh. it's gone. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to stay away? Is that how this magic stuff works? That, that 73. was one, that was one of a move. 75. He's like, he's like, can he? Uh, oh. You thought that you make someone go away. I thought it was more like metaphorical. Yeah. You know, and 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 when it had it in my when I was in its mouth and on the boat, I was thinking maybe I should cast that spell on myself and make myself go away. But I didn't know where I would go. So where would so you go? I was a little worried about that. Was well, that sent you back to Nebraska? I don't know. I I mean that would be ideal, but what if it sends me somewhere awful? Yeah. So we don't want that. No. I've I've heard of a place called Jersey once. <laughs> So uh, hopefully the big electric creature is back in its home where it belongs. Wait, that's what, I, that's I may, where I was I may, envisioning. I might like stand like guard to everyone to stay guard for can we can maybe like for like half an hour just trying to make sure that this thing isn't coming back. Would okay. that be fair? Half hour passes and it does not come back. All right. Yeah. I believe it would be about midday right now. I think you set up in the morning. People are coming out, uh, kind of tending to the wounded, tending to the, the deceased, and assessing the damage to homes and such. I'll say, let's go get quick and then come back to... I don't know about you, but I can do it a minute. I don't think, even though I have my sea legs, I don't think I have them. Yeah, that was pretty rough. That, that I'm very hurt. <sighs> it hurt a lot. A lot of anger fueling that, you know, that device <laughs> spell. So, does anybody know where these kind of creatures come from if they're not from here? Well, I think uh, a lot of them said that it's from Iskard, no? Iskard, what, where, what's Iskard? Where that portal leads to. I'm just wondering if it's like a fiend type creature, because I feel like every time we, we get these, we go places, we get these fiends jumping out at us, trying to kill us. Do you ever get that feeling? <laughs> Yeah, this seems a little different just because of the whole sea serpent likeness to it, but 
Maybe it is just a different version. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, would would we would I see um, ships on this side uh, on this coast? Are there still any salvable? No. Same uh, different. Same. Uh, the docks have been completely ruined by the thing coming up mm -hmm. into town. So if there were like what what few boats would have been there have been demolished. How's the weather looking? Um, the, the storm subsides once the uh, the beast has been banished. Um, so kind of gray, not black storm clouds any longer, but just kind of gray skies. The winds stabilize, become calmer. Did these seem like intelligent creatures? Like, was there a method? Like, they were very hostile, but, like, I mean, and clearly, the you know, the port where the boats are is closest to where the water is, where they are. But, I mean, was it like an intentional, we're trying to destroy all boats kind of feeling? Um, You could make a nature check. Oh, I'm sure I'm good at that. Let's find out. <laughs> I have a little bit though. Okay. Hmm. I, uh, it's 12. Very middling. Um, probably more like territorial. Okay. Not super intelligent, but, you know, maybe proximity to the water or, um, if they've recently migrated to this area, they're they're expanding their reach and thus uh, becoming more aggressive. Okay, that makes sense. It's not a, like, oh, we don't want you to be close to the portal, so we're going to destroy any way for you to get to there. Okay. Well, what are okay. we thinking? Well, I mean, are we going to stay here? I'd say maybe we might need a little rest, and then we might need to hike it. Hike it back over why the water. Why can't we fly? Why can't we fly over the water? Can, Can we let us all fly? It no, I I used up a lot of like you know energy sending that yeah. creature away. I I could I could make yeah. some one fly for ten minutes, but that's about you know I can't make many of us fly, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I did good job, by the way, on that that spell. <laughs> that was yeah, a good job. Works, it's great when it doesn't yeah. work to get chomped by a freaking sea serpent, but you know, it's I'm glad it works. Yeah, I couldn't take another blast like that. So plan is to stay overnight and then in the morning start to hike back to Glorium. Will you be hiking by land, or are you going to be using some mix of your water walk to try to cross the seas again? I, that's, I don't know, you guys. <laughs> well, we might run into more sea serpents on the water than we would on land, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it might make sense to do some wa walking on the land, but if, I mean, if we could walk out to the portal and get the Mimir to, to do its thing... That would be pretty sweet. There's not going to be boats that can take us. But I think we could. Yeah. I mean, if Clack's going to do the, the Mimir recording, then um, maybe, you know, we could f walk out there or fly out there or something like that and then just we do it. Walk without and being fly in the... We're not getting sucked into the, you know, do a 10 minute flyby. Without yeah. being on the water. Yeah. I could help Clack fly. Sure. It would be a combo, land, sea, and air. We're going to be like the armed forces <laughs> of Planescape. So, okay. <laughs> uh, so you want to make your first destination to go back to the whirlpool? Yes. All right. So you will uh, water walk out in that direction from whence you came. Um, You know, take you the better part of the morning to get out there. Uh, and then once you're close enough, uh, Cerebella, it sounds like it's going to take Clack with a fly spell over. Um, I'm just going to cast fly on Clack. Or fly and on I'll Clack. concentrate okay. on Clack flying. I don't need to get close to that. I'll be fine. 
<laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Clack will bring the Mimir out into the the center of the whirlpool. Maelstrom. Record her their his notes. Um, come back to you all, and then you're probably gonna have to probably refresh that water walk spell a few times. But then you're gonna walk back to Glorium. <laughs> And when you return to Glorium, you will find that half of the village has been decimated by some large creature that attacked the previous day. The bird boat is missing many of its feathers and is kind of uh, beached up on the... Uh, up on the shore, there are bodies, just bodies upon bodies that lie um, in the sands that lead up uh, into the bay. And then even some of the buildings and such have been demolished and decimated. Uh, and you can see Tirza Bonebreaker uh, with some of her, um, her young warriors, her young um, trainees kind of surveying the damage. They're walking around doing medical um uh kinds of surveying and, and leaning down once in a while she'll kind of tap an individual on the shoulder and you'll see her attendants come with a blanket and just put it put it over their their heads or whatnot uh, as you come in she will look to you all as uh, she gives a nod she's standing right next to an older orc individual whose eyes are closed and she taps him and they go and they put a blanket over his head uh, she'll probably lock eyes with Zilloff and reach down and grab a great axe that is laying next to him and she'll hand it over to you and just say he won't need it where he's going and a deal's a deal he died a warrior's death. Defended yeah. our home. You take this and you honor his memory. You have my word that I will. Questions. I have many questions, but I see now's not the time. Uh, I'm sorry. That we were not here to help. We were looking for giants and our eyes should have been towards the sea. But we got some combat, some experience under a lot of these green horns. They'll be ready for the, when the big challenge comes. I hope you... I hope you got what you needed out there. Sorry that we can't um, be more hospitable this second trip to our great village but uh there will be a meal tonight to commemorate this this loss to remember the dead hope you might be able to uh regale us with one last story of Bacall and the courier uh, i look back at the group yes yes of course we will we'll be here So Tirza and the locals, they move on. Um, you can tell they want to know everything that happened with you, but there's just too much work to be done. They're going to save hearing those stories until this evening. But you have your plus one. Uh, it was a great axe, I believe, uh, that you can, you okay. can take. Um, sure. The rest of the day is uh, kind of spent... Uh, Maybe some of you even uh, join in and helping with uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, recovery period here, and then during the evening she throws a, a feast um, as a memorial to the the deceased and the dead. Um, anything that anybody wants to do. Uh, before we close this session out, I think that's going to close out basically our chapter in Glorium. 
there was some glory that ha was to be had um and some of the call it sounds like did in the end uh earn the honor found his courage but it cost him his life and that of the courier uh the bird boat also deceased Could could I uh, could I go down to where the 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 bird boat? What was his name? Scrag or something? That's is right. to yes. like just kind of pay some respects to the sentient boat. <laughs> um, is there anything like left on the boat? Like any thing that? would be like a memento bunch of javelins <laughs> do you want to need these javelins back <laughs> no as you're going through as you're going through you're collecting some of the salvage and such um you kind of see like maybe this vision out on the surface of the sea um maybe some reflection of the past or something like that but um You see the image of Bacall um, talking with this like gigantic titan-like figure, um, actually a, a woman uh, who looks down upon him um, and she seems to be instructing him like go go into the far lands. You need to go and uh, take on a mighty quest and like prove yourself. And you can see Bacall uh, in a more mundane looking boat uh, take to the seas. And he uh, makes his way over to a um, kind of a, a, a big outcropping of rock, a cliff that overlooks the sea. And there's a little switchback road. And he climbs up all the way to the top of this outcropping where there's this huge nest. And inside the nest, there's a gemstone. And it looks like that is the object that Bacall has been tasked by the Titan to grab hold of and recover. And he sneaks his way over to the nest, recovers it, just as this huge raven that looks very much like Scrag bears down on him with his talons and grabs him. Bacall grabs the gemstone and holds it tight to his chest as the raven takes him up and out over the seas. And just as the bird is about to let go, Bacall seems to call upon some kind of power from the gem, which calls a lightning strike down that hits the raven and it falls to the sea. Scrag, incapacitated, just floating on the surface of the water, Bacall drowning, realizing that his victory is for naught if he uh, is about to plunge to the depths of the sea and drown. He grabs hold of the giant raven and uses the power of the gem once more to call upon the churning waters to push them to safety and push them to shore. And in that buoyancy, in that safety of, of the shoreline, the giant raven wakes up, just as Bacall does, and they face each other and realize that they needed each other to survive, even though they were were rivals and in that uh moment uh scrag is moved by his mercy and pledged his service to him and bacall asked uh, upon his return to deliver the gemstone to the the daughter of the storm lord that that she grant the giant raven everlasting life and and bond uh, bring them into a union into a friendship that would last the rest of their lives and this is the story of scrag becoming the boat and uh the story of their bond of friendship and you see that and past it, just as the life kind of completely uh go extinguish is extinguished from scrag's eyes um baz would say that um uh, they had a an unlikely friendship, and he's like look around at at the party, kind of like knowing, <laughs> knowingly look around at the party. 
that's all yeah well i know uh we might not be the cause of all this but we're sure part of it and i think i've made up my mind if we can put things back into place and somehow avoid all this from happening again Uh, it'd be worth whatever happens, at least to me. I think we have to continue and do what we set out to do. Try to put this right. What do you all think? Yeah. Where, where do you think the power that we have is coming from. Yeah, I, I don't know I, either. I don't know. It, and that kind of, it just really hit me today. We can do some pretty powerful things, right? Like you guys are healing people, bringing them back from the edge of unconsciousness and there's there's just we're walking on water like i i've only known of one guy that's done that and it's pretty remarkable um yeah some something some someone's given us a lot of power here maybe we got to be careful how we use it Yeah. We'll we'll be careful how we use this power. We're in control. I sure hope so. And with that, I think we'll close out the session unless there's any further uh discussion or items that the group wants to take care of. Uh, likely next week we would be setting out for the gate town of Cursed. I do got one thing. Probably at like the memorial dinner to those who are slain, Baldwin would step forth on the podium and read his poem aloud. Oh, yes. The Tempest brought forth one's shadows now laid to rest a warrior's will oh that's a good one baldwin thank you <laughs> that will get a lot of raised glasses of ale um from the warriors of glorium um so that seems like a fitting a fitting end. So as we close this out, we will turn it over to our players to uh, pay some respects within the group um, and deliver some uh, some appreciation. Some uh, tell one another something about the session that was um, unique. Uh, Something that really made the special the session special. I'll go first, because uh, I wasn't expecting it in any capacity. Just by saying, you know what? I'm gonna cast Water Walk. It's like such a genius idea. <laughs> like never cool. would I've ever thought in any circumstance anyone would bring that up. I was like, oh my god, that is an awesome idea. Why wouldn't mm -hmm. we? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I, wasn't sure was we would, I wasn't sure if we would I wasn't sure if we would if you fall off the boat maybe you don't want to come up you know if there's sea serpents mm -hmm. in there <laughs> I don't know well thanks well, I that I've turned out to be played very this valuable. before <laughs> and then we're just like walk on the water I'll just get off the boat and just walk there just like oh mm -hmm. we can yeah. do that 
Yeah, with as bad as we rolled trying to get both of the boats. And Alex, I'm sorry, but you were really rubbing it in how we failed miserably to secure either boat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was good? No, no. Not at all. I feel like we failed a lot tonight on a lot. <laughs> oh, thank this goodness trip. we had water walk. My but boats are meant for the stars, not for the water. Aww. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'll uh, give my... Um, well, I'll first start with the, obviously with our magic users. I mean, which is pretty much all everyone, but me, <laughs> you did a great job with those spells when we needed it. So uh, it's how powerful uh, magic is, I guess. So great job. And then that banishment was amazing. So that, that really, that was fun. That was that fun. Was that fun. Uh, you know, one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, it worked. Um, and I'll say I'll tack on a little bit more. Thanks to Alex for not only getting through all the problems that like whatever was happening, but also putting together such a good, a great story with the material that you had. Uh, we could, I, I, I've gotten to know your touch on some things with some of the stories and you always make them so much better than probably what they were. So I really appreciate uh, all that, the extra uh, story that you added for us so yeah i would piggyback on that but to say that that was uh that was really nice touch with the story of of the of um brag and fickle how they met that was good that was helped to sort of pass through that section i think for uh it's kind of really bad result for <laughs> almost everybody involved so uh um but I actually like the I, I liked the uh, everybody's ideas for like what, how to help the sinking boat. <laughs> and then and Baldwin's like, I'm just going to make a bunch of hands and try to scoop them out. And then, so uh, that was good. And our rolls just didn't want to cooperate. Sometimes though, sometimes we had good rolls. So, mm -hmm. man. Well, and I'm just grateful for like. Okay, Isaac, you were saying that, oh, the magic users and their spells, but you're up there, like, you know, wiggling your butt in the, in the sea serpent's <laughs> face and taking all that heat. So, like, honestly, I, there's no way I could survive attacks. Like, you know, the, I mean, that, that's awful. So it's your keep, I love how our team is coming together and really supporting each other, but you're valuable. And I mean, I was just really grateful when you were like, oh yeah, you're just going to keep trying to get that, that uh, negative attention there. So it all, it all works together. And, and the conscience, I mean, you all are good guys, right? You're all, oh, we need to go get clack. We need to go get help. Like you all have such a good conscience, but I feel like, um, Ziloff in particular, as he's doing that redemption arc, is is it, it, I just feel it. I feel the growth, and so I appreciate how you let that out in even small ways. And I would say thank you to Jenna for allowing us to uh, take some liberties with the character and still allow us to play the game uh, here tonight. Uh, clack is fine. Clack is okay. Um, but just MIA for a little bit there, but, uh, no, no change of character is going to be necessary. So, um, thanks. Uh, can I, we'll, yep. Can I ask if, uh, she can do her like summary when we start next time, like what she would have said at the portal? Cause I, I do enjoy yeah. hearing. I don't know if she has, you know, much that she wants to say. If she if she wants to, I'd love to hear it. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, maybe we can we can start with what Clack did record and maybe uh maybe everyone else can think about what they they would have recorded if it was up to them. I don't know. Um Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Some choice words. <laughs> so awesome. Well, yeah, next week we will pick it back up next Wednesday doing cursed um but we got another game this week uh we have isaac will be running um forbidden lands for us on friday at 8 p.m and um i think we've got a 
a community council meeting on Sunday night uh, for anybody that is a member of our Patreon. You can come and talk about the channel, talk about the stream. Uh, we'll be doing that. I think it's at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, I have to double check that, but I know it's, I think it's Sunday. Uh, just kind of talk about um, different ideas for uh, what we can do as a community. We we have done a, what, a movie night that we did a few weeks ago. We'll probably do some more uh, movie nights in the future. Um We've got an Extra Life tabletop weekend in a few weeks. We'll be raising some money for the Children's Hospital. So we've got all sorts of stuff going on. Um, we appreciate any of the, the feedback. Yeah, thank you for the uh, re-roll there, uh, Tux. Well, I think that does it for us. We're going to throw a raid out to Lost Caravan RPG, see what they're up to, and call it a night. So thanks, everybody. See some of you Friday.